A woman is seen in a church, praying in Spanish. A man drives on an untiled road, he is driving a Ford and also drinking. He stops at the juncture where the road divides into two. He spins the bottle on the dusty road to decide which path to take. He takes the path on the right. As he drives on, he comes across a town, which he says cannot be on the map. The name of the town is Jericho. As he drives into the town, noticing how empty and run down it is, he muses to himself that he would not be spending much time there before he leaves, until he sees a woman being escorted into a building by some gangsters. This is the same woman who had been praying in the church. He stares, after she is taken inside, he continues driving, only to be blocked by some gangsters. They break his windshield, his car lights, and also puncture his tire. All of this is punishment for looking at their boss's property, the woman he had stared at. They even direct him to the sheriff's office to make a report and advise him to leave the town as quickly as possible. John Smith goes ahead to make a report to the town sheriff. He goes into the sheriff's office, and before he can speak, the sheriff assures him that he had seen everything and that he wasn't going to do anything about it. He advises John to fix his car and get the hell out of town. John stares at him, obviously displeased, and writes him off as someone already bought by the gangs that run the town. He goes into a bar run by Joe. Joe tells him he is the first customer he has had that week. Joe goes on to tell him how things are in the town and how the gangs have managed to run off every good member of the town. He tells Smith that the town is basically run by two gangs, the gang from Chicago and the Italians. The gang from Chicago, which is run by Doyle, is the one that damaged his car. As Joe talks, John straps on his guns as he figures the gangs are not A-list players, and he could make a couple of bucks. He tells Joe he is going to discuss with those who damaged his car about its repair cost. John heads out to the saloon owned by Doyle. He sees the woman he had stared at, which got his vehicle thrashed. She tells him in Spanish that everyone is afraid and that the only thing he will find is death. A man steps out from a room filled with Doyle's men, he is the one who got John's car thrashed. The man tells John that he thought he had warned him not to look at the boss's property. John tells him that he was there to see him. The man asks John if he has fixed his car yet. John replies that he is running low on cash and is wondering if the man could help pay for the damages. The man says John would have to kill him first. The man draws his gun, only to be shot out of the building by John. Before he lands on the ground, John turns around and shoots at the gangsters still behind the glass doors, suppressing them. The man John shot is dead. John goes over to see the Italians. They are quite pleased with his actions and offer John employment. His action of killing Doyle's second fastest shooter had impressed the Italian gang leader, Strozzi. He is shown to his room by a beautiful girl named Lucy. Later that day, John has dinner with the rest of Strozzi's gang. John believes that most of Strozzi's gang members are unprofessional. As they eat, Strozzi's cousin comes in and complains that he doesn't like the way John has been hired especially since John killed one of Doyle's men. He even shouts at John. John stands up and leaves, but before that, he tells Strozzi's cousin that if he has a problem with his employment, he should tell his boss, Strozzi. John returns to the bar and asks Joe if he has a room. Joe says he does. John takes the room. He goes to a sex worker, and as they begin to have sex, he is ambushed by Doyle's men. John shoots the two gangsters that attack him and kills both. He also knocks out the sex worker, who, it turns out, had sold him out. She gets arrested by the sheriff. Lucy comes and gets John, they both head out to a place called Selena's. It turns out Strozzi wants to make some sort of speech. As they drive, Lucy tells John a lot about Strozzi and Giorgio. It turns out Giorgio is the son of someone important back in Chicago, and Giorgio is his cousin. She tells him Giorgio isn't really happy with the kind of money John is getting. It seems Giorgio doesn't like him much. John asks Lucy why Strozzi would send his girlfriend to come and get him. She replies that Strozzi believes she is too smart to get out of line. When they both enter the building, Giorgio asks what took them so long. John says it was raining. Lucy says he should kiss her ass. Strozzi gets up and asks Lucy the question again. She replies, hadn't you heard before? It was raining, and it wasn't so easy to come. Strozzi slaps her and pushes her into a chair. John tells the gang that when he was at the whorehouse, Doyle sent some of his guys after him, and he had to kill them. Giorgio screams that John had killed two more of Doyle's men. Strozzi says that if John had killed two more of Doyle's men, it was good for them. He then tells John that they are expecting their shipment next week and that Doyle is going to get his the next day, so they are going to steal his goods and that John is going to earn his pay. The next day, on the desert road inside Mexican territory, they all stand together, looking at Doyle's shipment. The entire gang is happy with themselves and are also eyeing Doyle's trucks being used for the supply. 
John states that the plan Strozzi came up with, which Strozzi hoped would catch the interest of his boss in Chicago, involves hijacking, corruption, and murder. John is to be the lead person. The Mexican officers who were supposed to protect the goods turn on Doyle's men and kill them all. They successfully steal Doyle's supply and his trucks too. John pays to get the sex worker out of jail and tells her to leave on the next bus out of town. He tells the sheriff that he knows he was the one who sold him out to Doyle's men, probably getting the information from his deputy sheriff, who was there when John asked Joe about the location of any whorehouse in Jericho. He tells the sheriff that he has information he wants him to sell to Doyle. He tells the sheriff that a shipment of booze belonging to Doyle got hijacked by some banditos. The sheriff asks him if what he's saying is true because if Doyle sends Hickey after him, he'll be coming after John next. The sheriff then tells John some scary stories about Hickey, how he slit his father's throat, burned down an orphanage, and committed other atrocities. John says the sheriff should just make sure he marks him down for half a thousand. John has decided to play the two gangs against each other and make some money out of it. John goes to see Lucy. He tells her he wants to talk and that he doesn't think people appreciate her. Lucy asks him, so what? Are you planning to be my hero? She still lets John into her room after confirming with him that no one had seen him come up. John convinces her to help him get some insider information in exchange for about a hundred grand. Lucy seems to agree as John ends up kissing her. John is in Joe's bar when one of Doyle's men comes in and says Mr. Doyle wanted him to come work for them full time. John responds that he doesn't think they can afford it. Doyle comes in and says he should try him. John says, a thousand dollars. Mr. Doyle asks, for a week or a day? John responds that he thought Doyle would be mad at him, seeing that he had killed three of his men. Doyle responds that it's the only cure he knows for being stupid. He then asks Joe, whom he calls dummy, to bring him their best booze. Doyle sits in front of John. He wants John Smith to kill both Strozzi and Giorgio. John asks about Hickey. Doyle responds that Hickey's methods are usually messy and that he wants a clean job. John says he'll think about it. John doesn't want to be an assassin. His response vexes Doyle, who begins to shout that he thought John was smart, but that he wasn't really smart. Did you think the meek would inherit the earth? Even if the meek inherited the earth, you, John, wouldn't be around to enjoy it. John feels he needs something really big to get into Doyle's pocket. John goes ahead and quits the Italian gang. He tells Strozzi to keep the remaining $500 he owes him. Strozzi is angry and asks John if it's the money or if Doyle offered him a better deal, as John walks off. Giorgio pulls out a gun and tells him to get back here. John isn't pleased with Giorgio's action, he knocks him to the ground and kicks him furiously. Strozzi prevents other members of his gang from shooting at John. After John is done kicking Giorgio, he tries to walk off, only for Strozzi to pull out his gun and point it at him. John, however, has already pulled his out. He asks Strozzi if he really wants to die because of his cousin. Strozzi drops his gun. John tells the sheriff, who had been watching the whole thing, to pass the information on to Doyle that he had turned Strozzi down. He then enters Joe's bar. Joe is laughing intensely. John asks Joe what he's grinning about. Joe says that was great and guesses John doesn't work for Strozzi anymore. John picks up a glass cup and asks Joe whether he washes them. John decides to wait out, he is waiting for Hickey to come back as he is out of hands to play. He sits out in the open eating a fruit. When one of Doyle's men comes by in a car, he is surprised that John can sit out in the open despite the number of enemies he has. The man tells John that some big money is coming in after their little war with Strozzi is over. He also introduces John to Mr. Doyle's girl. It's the woman John had been staring at when he came into town. Doyle's right-hand man tells John he was just bringing her from the church, which made her feel better about staying with Mr. Doyle. They drive off. John goes to check on his car at the mechanic's workshop. The technician tells him how far he has come with the work. He has basically fixed everything except the windshield, which he has ordered but noted would take a while to reach Jericho. He also says someone had been around trying to find out John's name and the car's registration. The technician says he didn't hand out the information, but the man checked the car anyway. Still, he found nothing. John is told that it was Giorgio who had come snooping around. Hickey comes back into town. John and Joe are in the bar when he does, and Joe actually says Hickey's back. Hickey is told by Doyle's men that Strozzi has broken the truce. John called Strozzi's place, and Giorgio answers. John tells him that Doyle knows Strozzi is the one who hijacked Doyle's shipment and that Ramirez might be going back on Doyle's payroll. He tells Giorgio that he is passing the information because he doesn't want to see Strozzi get hurt. Lucy comes around and tells John where Giorgio was heading to, she tells him that Giorgio had gone alone. John goes ahead to sell the information to Doyle. Doyle offers again for John to join them, 
But John turns him down. Doyle is pissed and starts shouting that he doesn't play like that. He attracts the attention of his gangsters. John gets to see Hickey for the first time, and he tells Hickey about all he had heard about him. Hickey tells him not to believe everything he hears. Doyle grabs the entire gang to discuss their next course of action. Hickey heads into Mexico and finds Giorgio with Ramirez and a certain border patrol officer. He kills Ramirez, his fellow officers, and the patrol officer. He also captures Giorgio. When they return to town, they inform Strozzi's gang that they have Giorgio and are willing to make an exchange for $100,000. On the day of the exchange, Strozzi and Doyle both double-cross each other, as Doyle's men kill one of Strozzi's people, and Strozzi has been able to capture Doyle's girl. The exchange eventually goes through, as both sides exchange their captives. John is visited by Lucy, who wants to borrow some money from him. She has been beaten up by Strozzi. She tells John how it all happened. During a fight with Strozzi, she had told him about her and John. John tells her she would find other men to play with. She asks John who would want to play with her when one of her ears has been cut off. John is shocked. He leaves her in the room and tells the sheriff to make sure she gets on the next bus. He goes and joins Doyle's gang. He tells Doyle that Strozzi is hiring new guns. Doyle sends him to go and take care of his girl. John heads over to the house where the woman is staying. He kills all of Doyle's men in the house and helps the woman escape. The next morning, when Doyle and Hickey return, he tells them he met all of Doyle's men dead. When Hickey asks him why he didn't return to town for backup, he responds that he thought Doyle's girl had run off and might soon return. They conclude that it was Strozzi's new gunners that had hit the place. John is captured as his story doesn't hold up, they even find one of Doyle's girl's properties with him, a cross. He is beaten within an inch of his life. He somehow manages to escape. Doyle is enraged and ransacks the entire town trying to find him. They even get Joe involved, Hickey points a gun at his face and demands to know where John is. The sheriff comes along and tells Doyle that John is at Strozzi's place outside of town. Doyle leads his entire gang to wage war on Strozzi's gang. They burn down Strozzi's place and kill everybody, including Giorgio and Strozzi. Joe had hidden John in an ice pack. The sheriff takes John to a church where John recuperates. Joe gets captured while trying to bring some food and bandages to John, he is caught by Doyle's men. The sheriff goes and informs John. He tells him Hickey and Doyle are not in town. John then storms Doyle's gangster's new place, Strozzi's building, which they had taken over. He kills everyone and saves Joe. He leaves a message for Doyle that he is out at Strozzi's place. When Doyle and Hickey arrive, Doyle says they had won the war and the three of them could be partners. Joe shoots Doyle, while John kills both Hickey and another henchman. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.